Welcome to UHCW's pre-operative knee replacement education video. My name is Richard King, I'm one of the orthopaedic consultants. You may want to watch this video several times and it might be a good idea to do it with a friend or family member. You may also wish to make some notes as you go along so that when a member of the therapy team calls you, they will be able to answer uh, the questions for you. So thanks for taking the time to watch this video and I'll hand over now to a member of the therapy team. So having a total knee replacement is all about you. We would like to make you aware of your role and responsibility in making your operation a success. You have opted to have a knee replacement in order to reduce your pain, improve the movement in your knee and overall the quality of your life. The aim of our video is to enable you to understand what is expected of you before, during and after your surgery. To teach you important exercises that you should start now to prepare your knee and carry on with after the surgery when you are home. It's also about helping you to think about how you need to plan and prepare for your surgery. So you need to prepare yourself to work hard both physically and mentally in order to get the best outcome from your knee. You should try to learn the exercises and practice them in order to build up your strength and condition yourself for a quick and effective recovery. It is your knee after all and your success is dependent on the effort you put in. The surgery will take about one to two hours but the rehabilitation can take up to a year. So planning ahead. Think about your meals, stocking up your fridge and your freezer. If you live alone, try to think of meals that are quick to prepare. Maybe ready meals or ones that you can cook beforehand and freeze so you don't have to spend too long on your feet. You'll need to consider who will help you with your housework, heavy laundry and shopping. Try online for shopping or ask Age UK to help. There may be a small charge. If you have a dog, arrange someone to walk them for at least two months. Another important thing to arrange is how you're going to get into hospital and how you're going to get home. Your stay in hospital will be as short as possible to reduce the time that you are at risk of infection and to get you back to your own home which is the best place to recover. Here's a bit of background about your recovery. Hopefully this will give you insight as to why you need to have your knee in the best condition before your surgery to enable it to cope afterwards. The first one to two weeks following your operation is the early phase and you should be aiming for a quiet knee. To achieve this you need to work hard on reducing the swelling. The amount seen is individual to you. Controlling pain with the use of ice and painkillers, gentle self-massage and the knee exercise programme little and often is the key. The same is said about the amount of walking you'll be doing at this stage little and often. It really isn't an urgent priority to set yourself walking goals. Too much, too soon will delay your recovery. The middle phase of your recovery is around two to six weeks post-op, where you carry on focusing on the basics and pushing the range of movement in your knee. Six weeks is usually when therapists will be looking to wean you off your walking aids. It is not a good idea to do this yourself. The late phase, around six weeks to three months, is focusing on stretching and increasing the strength of your knee. You'll be aiming to return to your normal life routine. Three months is where your new knee starts to feel like it belongs to you. Most people continue their exercise program for around six months, but it can take a year for it to tolerate your normal life. Your exercises are an essential part of your recovery and it is important that you start these before you come into hospital to strengthen your knee. You can liken this to an athlete who trains before their event to ensure that their body or muscles are strong enough to cope. In your case, your event is the operation, so you need to train for it. These exercises should be started as soon as possible, aiming to do them three times a day. It's a good idea to make a timetable if you think that would help structure your training. Think of this like an antibiotic prescription. Follow the advice as directed and complete the course. You will find some easier than others because your body has adapted over time to avoid pain. It does this by keeping your knee slightly bent or using other muscles to help out. Please don't just do the easy ones. Try all of them. They will become easier as you train. 
Starting with only one repetition, you will find that soon you can manage five or ten. Please be mindful, however, that there is nothing to be gained by pushing yourself into a lot of pain. So, the exercises. Static glutes or squeezing your bum muscles. So lying on your bed or sitting in your chair, you hold the contraction of your bum muscles together and hold the squeeze for five to 10 seconds. Slowly relax and repeat this 10 times. Heel prop, this is to straighten your knee. This works by stretching the many structures at the back of your knee. It is likely that it will be uncomfortable to start with, so begin slowly and increase the time you complete it for. Lying down, placing your heel on a rolled towel initially for a few seconds. Come off the towel, rest straight for 10 seconds and repeat five times. As you improve, you will be able to rest on the towel for several minutes. When you can do this, add in the strap or belt and complete the exercises as described on the image. Static quadriceps. Lying down, bend your ankles by pulling your toes towards you and tighten the muscles in the thigh to draw your kneecap up towards your hip. Hold for a count of 10. Relax slowly, repeat 10 times. This exercise helps you regain control of your knee, ready for standing and walking. It also helps you achieve a straighter knee, which is very important for reducing your post-operative pain. Inner range quads. Lying down on a bed with a rolled towel or the like underneath your knee, keeping your knee resting on the towel, lift your foot off the bed to straighten your knee. Hold for the count of 10 and slowly lower your foot back to the starting position. Repeat 10 times. Knee bending when seated on a chair. In sitting, place a thin plastic bag under your foot on the operated side. Move your foot backwards and forwards along the floor. The bag will aid you to do this. Draw your heel towards you until you feel a block to further movement. Now cross your other leg in front of your operated side and pull your heel further towards you by using your other leg until you can go no further. Hold at this position for five seconds. Slide your foot slowly forwards again and repeat this 10 times. Please make sure you don't stand up on the plastic bag. Remain seated during this exercise. We don't want you to slip. On the morning of your surgery, you should shower at home and put on clean clothes. When you arrive, you'll be greeted and admitted by the nursing staff. You will see the anaesthetist and the surgeon who will ask you to sign a consent form, followed by the therapy team who will teach you how to use elbow crutches, practice the stairs and try your transfers. When it is time for your surgery, the third staff will collect you and you'll be recovering in the recovery room afterwards. Back on the ward, you might have a few of these things. Um, Flotrons, they're around your lower legs and they help to prevent blood clots. You'll have uh, an intravenous drip and you'll have oxygen that will be given to you via your nose or via a mask over your nose and mouth. Once well enough, you will return to the ward. Now this is when the work really does begin. Start by doing your static glutes and static quads. If you've had a spinal anaesthetic, you may not be able to feel that you can do these exercises, but have a go. Later that afternoon, early evening, you'll change out of your gown into your own clothes and get up from the bed. The day after your surgery, you'll be seen several times by the therapy team. They will check that you are completing your exercises properly with good technique. They will check that you are walking correctly and progress you onto your elbow crutches. They will be looking to see that your knee bends well and most importantly, it is straight. When ready, you'll be asked to practice your transfers and step and stairs as needed. So when you have completed your therapy goals and are medically fit, you will be going home. Your medication will be provided for you. Once you get home, you will be in a more relaxed environment to get yourself into your routine to achieve your quiet knee. You must continue to elevate your leg when at rest, keep it straight. Use your ice regularly as advised by the therapy team. 
Your priority is your exercise programme, not walking. If you are unsure for any reason about your exercises, please give the therapy team a call. You will have been taught how to massage your leg gently in hospital, followed by gentle flexion. Please keep this up. It will aid healing and stop your knee from getting stiff. As you would find at the end of any instruction manual, there is a troubleshooting chapter. These are the common questions. On post-op, why is my leg and foot pink? This is because in theatre your skin is prepared before the operation starts with an alcohol liquid that is clear. A pink dye is added so your surgeon knows where he has painted it. I'm trying to rest straight but my leg or foot turns out to the side and it feels really much better resting with a little bend in it. This is probably due to tight hamstrings and poor muscle control. You really have to work at the heel prop exercise. Why is my knee sore and swollen and almost twice the size of my other one? This is the inflammation response to the surgery. It is as individual as you are. Elevate high, use your ice. Your therapist will instruct you to use it a little more frequently than you're doing already. Look at your walking activity. In other words, reduce it. Continue with your self-massage and gentle knee flexion with your hands for a few minutes after using the ice. Do I really need to use crutches? Yes, even on the shortest of distances, you use them to protect your healing knee so it doesn't have to work so hard and remain swollen. When can I drive? Please wait until you've had your post-op surgical review and have permission from your consultant. This may be six to seven weeks afterwards and you may have to start using your eyes a little more frequently again as you get back your normal life pattern. So that summarises the main points that the therapists want you to understand. Let's just recap to make sure that this is crystal clear. Please read the information books that are given to you. Please listen to the advice that you've just heard. Please ask us any questions so that we can reassure you. Don't forget to arrange any help that you're going to need. Think about your home environment. Think about transport to and from hospital for appointments and for the surgery. Prepare and do the shopping for the meals that you're going to need. If you smoke, please try and stop. Please eat as healthily as you can. And start those exercises now. Thanks for listening.